The Great Swamp Watershed Association has given the Marcellus Hartley Dodge Memorial Award to extraordinary individuals who have had a remarkable impact on creating the Great Swamp National Wildlife Refuge, on preserving the watershed that feeds that National Wildlife Refuge, and on protecting and preserving the environment and open space of the state of New Jersey. You're about to meet them. Without their efforts in New Jersey, we would not have a Great Swamp Watershed, a Great Swamp National Wildlife Refuge, and we wouldn't enjoy some of the most rigorous environmental protection and open space preservation anywhere in the United States. We owe them a great vote of thanks. A long time ago, uh, in the early 70s, there was a cartoon character by the name of Pogo who said, uh, we have met the enemy and it is us. So in terms of identifying the cause and the problems that we face, it is actually the proliferation of human habitation and the works of man that we have to protect ourselves against. Because for a number of reasons, we, we have a tendency to kill the things we love the most. Um, whether it's a piece of open space or uh, a river or the ocean or whatever it is, um, in seeking our own self-satisfaction, we seem to find ways to destroy those things, uh, perhaps inadvertently and perhaps only in increments, but nevertheless destroy. So far we haven't learned that lesson completely, um, and in fact in many places we haven't learned it at all. I recognized very early that protecting the environment requires controlling land use. Land use was the key to environmental protection. Got involved with the Great Swamp when uh, Chris Daggett, who was serving as DEP commissioner under Governor Kane, called me one day and said, we're having a big debate about the expansion of a sewer treatment plant in Chatham, we'd like to put together a task force made up of all the interested parties. So for three years, we worked very hard to understand the basin surrounding the Great Swamp. What came out of that was the 10 towns in the basin working together to protect the Great Swamp. It's been a model for the state, and that was, it was a real piece of work. Now. Of course, we have the issues of trying to protect the water in the highlands. And I was on the state planning commission when we first created the state plan. And all of those things have been because how you control land use, how you treat land use, and how you manage growth to not sprawl all over the landscape has basically been what I've been doing all these, all these years. This state has been able to provide water for its citizens in all these uh, very densely populated areas because we have protected some. That's why the highlands is so important. It's why the Great Swamp is so important. The Great Swamp basically helps us to keep the Passaic River working. I, I'm not sure that uh, it works as well as it can. That's why the job is never over. Since World War II, we've seen the combination of the American dream, uh, the, uh, the uh, open road uh, dream of, of Americans, and uh, an American tax policies, which to a great extent at the local level gear around property taxes, drive a bulldozer through the American landscape. That gave me the incentive. I, I, I have watched the disappearance of, uh, the virtual disappearance of valleys and, and mountains that I, I've loved. I think these resources are important to all of us in every way, not just in terms of a sustainable environment, which is important enough in its own right, but in terms of quality of life. There is nothing that gives me more enjoyment than being in a place like this, where we are trying very hard to save this piece of property now in conjunction with um, various environmental organizations, the Great Swamp Watershed Association and the New Jersey Conservation Foundation. This is the the headwaters of the Great Brook, the absolute headwaters of the Great Brook. Uh, there are aspects of this that just bring peace to me, um, and I am so delighted that I found that my, 
my children respond to it. I guess it's the child in all of us. So uh, in a nutshell, there's a lot at stake all around the world. Um, and we have to have, um, I believe very strongly that if, if you leave it to others, it's never going to happen. And, and by, the, by it, what I mean is the, the confluence of the economic future of the world with the concept of sustainability and, and also uh, a reawakening of urban peoples to all, all the liberating and life-enriching experiences that are to be had uh, in the natural environment. When I was a volunteer in my hometown, and uh, it was called the Korahar-Charn Arboretum, and I took school children around. And so as I walked around the Arboretum with these school children asking me questions, uh, I came to have a much greater understanding and appreciation and love of the land itself so that when Earth Day came in 1970, I was really ready to be part of the environmental movement. Although Leopold, who was with the Park Service in, I think, the late 1940s, is probably regarded as one of the fathers of the environmental movement. The, the quote from Aldo Leopold is that we abuse land because we regard it as a commodity that belongs to us. When we see land as a community to which we belong, we may begin to treat it with love and respect. We cannot regard this land that we own, no matter how small or how large, as just a commodity or property that we can do what we want with, that we have to be committed to realizing that this land creates a community and we are part of the community. The Great Swamp battle was a catalyst for much of the activity that's gone on since. We have new organizations that have come into this area. They're working throughout New Jersey. We suddenly realize that some of our most precious and valuable natural resource areas were about to be destroyed with just unbridled development. Let's never let our guard down because uh, you have both very good developers who understand the need to protect important resources and some very bad ones who have no regard for natural resources whatsoever. The Great Swamp is a perfect example of a place that is greatly needed for wildlife uh, habitat and for recreational purposes too. So uh, we must always be vigilant, keep working constantly to set aside what is really unusual in New Jersey. And the time is running out very fast. I think there's always been a tension in America between exploiting natural resources and conserving them. And there's a lot of education and changing of the culture that's necessary to get that straight. And it comes down to this. It comes down to whether land is a resource or a commodity. And it requires work by a lot of people and in particular a lot of volunteers to move the culture to do what we need to do to conserve land. The conservation process is taking place in a democracy and it takes a certain amount of public participation, even debate, which at times is raucous, in order to move the ball forward. That requires an army of volunteers. I, I think that's what it's all about. I think that the conservation is of the people, by the people, and for the people. 
And without that, without that push, it's very much a democratic process, as Teddy Roosevelt once famously said. And I think that the lessons of Aldo Leopold have to be retaught and relearned and reabsorbed in every generation. As Santayana said, the one who forgets to remember is doomed to repeat. Environmental education exists today because we are such a society and a culture of disconnect. We've become disconnected from those very systems that sustain our lives. And so the educational process needs to be one that is not brings facts to our understanding, but also an experience. It's the full experience of being connected to the real world that sparks the imagination and quickens the heart to change attitudes and our behaviors uh, that will encourage us then and motivate us to preserve this natural treasure which is ours. When we heard in this area that the Port of New York Authority was hoping to build a jet port in the Great Swamp, we recoiled with horror. It led not only to a meeting or two that saved the swamp, but it also led to one of the greatest ecological movements in all of New Jersey history. It led not only to the saving of the swamp, but it led as well to several Green Acres bills which have assured ecological beauty in the state of New Jersey. I, I truly believe that if the Port of New York Authority had not threatened to build a jet port in the Great Swamp, that it would now have been eaten away with garbage dumps or, or housing uh, in the wetlands. Saving the swamp led to a much, much greater and broader ecological movement in the state of New Jersey. I believe that it's the very base on which modern ecological saving is based. It led to, for example, seven or eight Green Acres bills, which have poured millions of dollars, almost a billion dollars, into ecological causes. New Jersey is very much aware of the need to preserve space now. It is a showcase in this nation. It was the first piece of wilderness that was ever put in the National Wilderness System, and that was no small accomplishment. It was just a miracle. We were all pioneers. It wasn't just one person. It was just hundreds of people who joined with us from across the country. If we hadn't had Governor Kane there in support of, of what we were doing and being a firm believer that this is the way that you treat land and the way you protect land, we couldn't have accomplished what we did. We've got to uh, continue to build that bridge from the past to the future. And uh, that does not mean that there can only be one part of the bridge. The bridge has two sides. And you've got to have that connection to your public lands and your water and your clean air or this country will not remain strong. And its people will not remain the vibrant people that they are today with the quality of life that they have today.